Hello you lovely people and welcome back to the channel. It's really exciting to have you guys here in the new workshop with me. So if you're new to the channel, basically Machining with Joe, we're all about machining, doing little projects out here in the Home Hobbyist workshop. And today I can finally reveal to you the new workshop in all its layout. But we've got a few things to be getting on with today before we can start machining any parts here in the workshop. So in the last video I shared with you my electrical experiences and a lot of people said Joe you're gonna kill yourself you're gonna burn that place down and I totally agree with you guys there is a few things that I need to do which to be honest I didn't actually know at the time so that's a great thing about YouTube I can share my videos with you and tapping into your knowledge as well you can basically feedback to me stuff I should be doing. So I had my friend come round who's a qualified electrician. He looked at it and he said, yeah, there is some bits that need doing. So until I get that done, I'm not actually gonna be running any of the heavy duty machines here in the workshop. Uh, the circuit as it is, the radial circuit, it's good for 16 amps. So I'm just gonna be using things like chargers, lighting, stuff like that, low key bits. But today I wanna be getting on with some more machine maintenance really. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Let's head over to my to-do list and I'll explain all in a mo. As with all good organised workshops then, I've now got a nice big whiteboard and it's got a to-do list on it. So ignoring the first few on here because that's all electrical related, we get down here to sort of machine maintenance. So I've got to level the lathe. So I've got to admit, in the old workshop, I never actually bothered levelling the lathe and I don't know it may have affected my parts quite badly and I just never knew it so I thought now we're in a sort of proper workshop as such I'm going to level that bad boy so that's the first thing on the list levelling the lathe after that I want to tram the mill so I have done a previous video on this so I'm not going to go too much detail but basically a milling machine it's basically like a drill press but a lot more accurate and you can do more than just drill holes. So for this thing to be super accurate, the cutting head or the spindle needs to be perpendicular to the bed in both the X and the Y axes. So to do that, I need to make sure the head, it's not twisted at all, that's the called the tramming part, and I need to make sure there's no nod on the column. So basically, if there's any nod, I'm gonna have to shim that because this isn't adjustable, and tramming the head is as easy as loosening the bolts and just getting that perfectly aligned. So that's the two major jobs we've got to do today. And if I've got any time after that, I basically want to try fixing my bandsaw because it's not broke, but every time I do any really heavy, long duty cuts in it, the blade has a tendency to pop off after about five or so minutes. So I need to check if I've got any alignment issues there and really get it going good again like it used to be. So two jobs we're definitely going to be doing and the third, if we get time, I'll try getting onto the bandsaw. Christ, that was a bit awkward. So what I'm doing here isn't gonna be super accurate because of the level of equipment I'm using. I'm actually using a wood maker's boat level and 
yeah, I don't think these are super accurate. To do this properly, you're meant to use like an engineer's level, which has got a much higher accuracy and resolution than one of these Draper boat levels. Um, so yeah, basically the process of doing this in each four corners of the lathe, it's got a, an adjustment screw that you can wind down. And by winding that down, in theory it sort of picks the lathe up as that makes contact with the ground. And you basically just go around and keep going until you've got the surface of the lathe ways fairly level. So I don't think you really want to see me do all that. You've seen me crawl under the bench and that's probably as exciting as levelling a lathe gets. This is my first time doing it and I feel like it's going to be quite a tedious process to complete this. But hopefully it'll be worth it. So I'm just going to finish this off now and when we're done we'll head over to the more interesting stuff because we're using dial gauges, the mill. So, see you over there in a sec. Right then, with the lathe all now set up and level, we can move on to almost the equivalent of that on the milling machine. So to start with I'm going to be checking the tram of the head. So to do so I'm using a dial test indicator on a set of bars that are all solid and secure not moving anywhere and basically I'm going to be panning from the left to the right or vice versa and just seeing what the difference on the gauge is. From there we can loosen the head, tap it round either way and get that thing bang on perpendicular. So let's give that a whirl. So that took potentially the longest time ever. I got this thing down to 0.1 mil across the sides and I thought I can do better than that. And sod's law, as soon as I undone the head, lost any reference I did once have and had to start all over again. But I think we got this pretty good now. So if we zero out this side, zero there, and we move across to the other side. So over 45 centimetres, 450 mil, we've got about a three foul difference. So I'm pretty happy with that. Three foul, it's about nine mil. Oh, nine mil, 0 0.09 mil. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think the next thing to do now is we're gonna check the nod of the head. Now I know I've got this thing lined up pretty good. So to do so, I'm gonna use a similar setup as what we've got here, but I'm going to check it with the table all the way at the front, send the table to the back and then check back there. Now when it comes to checking the nod of the head, it's very similar to tramming the head in the sense that we're using a dial test indicator and this time instead of sweeping the lengthways of the table as such, we're sweeping the widthways. So I'm going to start off by table all the way at the front and we're just going to zero off our dial test indicator. Uh, there. So with that now zeroed off, I'm going to wind the table all the way back and from there we're going to sweep across with the dial test indicator again and we'll see what reading we get. So. If you can see there, we're not actually as accurate as we are side to side. So I zeroed that originally on zero and it's dropped down to 70, which means we've got a 0.3 millimeter difference. Uh, so nod wise, 0.3 mil. Now, I've got to decide now what I've got to do because I've got two factors here. One, accuracy, two, rigidity. To get this thing running accurate, I'm gonna to have to undo the column and I'm gonna to have to put some shims under there to tilt that 
column slightly forward or slightly back, whichever way I've got to go. But by adding shims, I'm therefore reducing the contact area that the column has to the base of the mill. To show this as an a bit of exaggeration, if you imagine this is my base, this is my column. If we're putting a shim, say, on the back, it's going to raise that up. And in theory, you're only going to have two contact points as such. You're going to have the back where the shim is and all the way at the front, which we're going to lose rigidity there. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this as is for now. And if I notice this starting to affect my parts majorly, then I know what I've got to do. But for now, where this is such a small mill, I don't want to affect the rigidity of it. So I'm going to leave it as is. While I've got all this set up though, there is some more things I could do. Because I had to dismantle all this, the DRO scales are just put on there roughly for now. I can use this dial test indicator to actually run across the top of my DRO and get that running parallel to the ways. So I'm gonna do that now. And once we've done that, I think I'll start to put the vise on using the Hamer gauge, which makes putting a vise on a mill super easy. I decided actually, because I love this Hamer gauge so much, I'm gonna jump to using that straight away. So for anyone not aware what a Hamer gauge is, it's a little bit like a dial test indicator, but you can use the probe on the end to basically move up and work in the X, Y and Z direction. So it's almost like a three dimensional dial test indicator as it were. So I'm now gonna lower this down roughly to zero. All right, we're roughly zero there. And because this doesn't need to be amazingly accurate, I'm just going to span across now and we'll see how far out we are on this. So it looks like it's dropping down this end. That's picking up that end. So I'm just going to adjust this screw here on the side. And I've got to raise this up very slightly. I think that's pretty good. So running it back and forth, just trying to level it out. Across half of the span here, it's gone up half a mil. So one mil deviance roughly across the whole thing. It's pretty good. So I can put the covers back on there and that is all now done. And can get the vise on and this thing's ready then to go when we've got good power in the workshop. So the final thing left to do on the mill then is just to dial this vise in. So the back fixed jaw here is running parallel with the ways of the milling machine. Because if we were just to bolt this down as is, it's quite a lot of slop there, and guarantee you this vise, this jaw, isn't gonna be parallel. So the first thing I normally do is weigh oil all the bed. And what I've had a tendency to start doing now is I've been offsetting my vise over to the left because with the addition of the turntable that I've got and dividing head, it's nice to have extra space over here to do any work that you need to do every now and again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the fixed point method where you basically bolt one of the sides of the vise down fairly tight and then lose, leaving the other side fairly loose, you can then just give a tap with a mallet and dial this in.
when it comes to getting jobs in the workshop then, that was quite a successful day today. I can rub some of these to-do lists off the board. Tram mill, gone. Level lathe, gone. Fixed bandsaw, didn't get around to that one. So, gonna fix the bandsaw off camera in my own time. It's not really gonna be very interesting to watch and I'm hopefully, there's gonna be nothing too major wrong with that bandsaw. So, the major stuff has been done. Leveling the lathe, sorting out the milling machine. Mill is all ready to go, lathe is all ready to go. Only thing left to do now is get all the electrics finalised and going to be getting a friend to help me with that. So that's not going to be too major. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today guys. It's been really nice for me to get back out here in the workshop and start getting my hands dirty again. So from me, I've really enjoyed it. And I hope you've enjoyed it too. Just looking at some basic maintenance operations on machines that you probably should do if you're going to be moving machines shop to shop. That's probably about it for this video. Please stick around because in the next video I'm going to share with you guys a more in-depth look into the workshop and give you a 2022 guided tour of the new place. So until then guys, see you next time. Happy machining. Thanks for watching.